Hello, BookTube. I'm Peg, and welcome to my channel. Well, I should say welcome back to my channel, because I've been absent for several days, I know, and I've completely failed at my Vlogmas plan to read a mystery, a prize-winning mystery a day and report on it. Um, well, several reasons. First of all, I was getting a little sick of mysteries. I, I do love mysteries, but kind of as a dessert type thing, not my main reading. In fact, it kind of, one of my subscribers uh, said something about she felt like she it was eating candy to read mysteries. And that's kind of how I got to feeling that I was eating candy all day, every day, instead of any uh, vegetables or protein. So anyway, I, I still like mysteries and I'll still talk about some of them, but probably not every day. But also, I, another list came out that I really want to lead, read and talk about. Um, I'm back home to my home in Pennsylvania. Uh, if you've watched my channel before, you saw I was a few days uh, in Missouri with my spending time with my family and my mother. And I uh, drove across country for three days, just, just got home last night, um, to, to my home in Pennsylvania. And though it's Great to see my cat and my husband. I have to say, I really love driving alone across country. And I have my own little set schedule of where I like to eat, where I like to stop. But the best thing, well, is one of the best things, is listening to audiobooks all the, all the time I'm driving. That's the only time I can listen to audiobooks very well. I can't just sit at home and listen to them. And I don't really do anything else traveling like city people do uh to listen to them but they're perfect for driving and i just it just makes the driving fly by well sort of and the other thing i like is checking into a hotel room all by myself um it's so much easier than bringing the cat and the husband along and i know that nobody's going to talk or bother me i can just read all i want there won't be any tv now don't tell them i said that i was glad to see them when i got home um okay so i'm back home and ready to start a new list which came out just a few days ago it's a prize called the republic of conscious consciousness prize and uh, it has 13 on the long list. This was uh, started just last year by Neil Griffiths, who is also a, a book, big booktuber and just has a novel out. And um, this is quickly turning out to be one of my, my favorite prizes. Um, it's actually for uh, limited to small presses in the UK and Ireland. And by that, they mean that the publish the publishing company has to have five or less full-time employees, which is pretty small. And uh, Neil, I've put at the bottom a link to uh, Neil's talk about why he thinks this is a good prize to have, why there are certain books that fit so well in this category and might not fit in a bigger one. But mostly I like them because of the criteria. And the two criteria he gives are it has to be hardcore literary fiction and it has to have gorgeous prose. So how can you go wrong with those? I have to say, I think a lot of them are kind of maybe a little bit experimental and things that big publishing companies don't want to take a chance on. And uh, I can only relate it somewhat to the Goldsmiths Prize, which we ju we just had, and I did I did a video on, which deals with experimental literature, which I love too. So between that and this one, I found my favorite prizes. Now I'm still following other prizes, but these thirteen I just have to read and talk about. Um, <clears throat> I have um, most of them on the 13 on this list, which I, I put a link that you can find it below. It really doesn't have its own website, but the uh, Times Literary Supplement, I, I believe, from what I've read, is going to be a new sponsor. And they had a great article on this, which I've linked below, um, talking a little bit about each book. And they're all just really different and all but three I hadn't even heard of. So anyway, I, I happen to have three of them that I already had and two of them I've read. So let me just kind of go through those before I get to reading. Okay, uh, the first one that I have not read is The Gallows Pole. 
<clears throat> now, I just ordered this sometime during the year um, because I thought it looked like a possibility of being on lists or me liking, mostly me liking, and I, and I never have got to it, but I was just delighted when I saw that it was on the list. And this is kind of a maybe a little alternate history type. It deals with a brutal tale of 18th century Yorkshire and a popular un uprising um, against rich people. And I, I, from what I've read, it maybe has some kind of experimental or a little different style writing. So I'm really looking forward to this. Okay, the next one I have read and reported on, Playing Possum by Kevin Davey. Uh, this was on the Goldsmiths Prize and um, list, and it actually is a again, a kind of an alternate history about T.S. Eliot, the great poet, who in this version, he uh, kills his wife in a hotel room and takes off across country. And this is the story of a contemporary detective who tries to trace him down. And it is just filled with interesting things. And this time I do want to, when I reread it, I want to read a little bit of T.S. Eliot probably the wasteland again, because I think it refers to it a lot. And also, I I will link it when I talk about this, but the author himself made a great video where it shows the places that T.S. Eliot supposedly went in this story, and it, it just really gives the flavor of it. So it's not very long, and I'm looking forward to reading it again. Okay, and this one, The Compass, is to me, has already my best book of the year. This was on the Man Booker International, or I guess it's called International Man Booker uh, for translated works, and it comes out pretty soon, actually, I think in February, maybe, and it was on the list last year, and I really wanted it to win. It's such a scholarly but interesting literary type book. It deals with a modern-day uh, musicologist, uh, who who has insomnia and stays up all night one night and, and has thoughts and dreams and all kind of allusions to people and places in his life. And I, I don't know how to explain it. You just have to read it. It is so interesting. And some of the allusions are to Orientalism and the time he spent in the Mideast. And um, it actually caused me to look up three or four other books that were mentioned in this book. So I am really, I, I'm sure I didn't get near as much in it the first time around. So I am really looking forward to reading this again. And if you'll know below, I have my uh, order, order of favorites made out already of the 13. And I put the two books that I've read on it. I'll be adding the others as I read them. But this is already number one on the list. So we'll see if it manages to hold its place while I read the other 13 or the other 12. So I hope somebody else is going to read along with me on these Republic of Consciousness uh, wonderful books. So I will be back later. Thanks for watching. Bye.